Fimi X8 Mini budget camera drone 4K 3 axis gimbal paid £190 from AliExpress it was on offer usually around 225 something like that came with one battery I bought a couple of extra batteries I think the batteries cost about £25 each something like that ignore the case that's just an old case from an old DJI drone that I had hanging around so in the package you get the controller it's pretty much the same as the Pretend Decatur controller same design joysticks somewhere to store them away which is always handy USB cable tool spare propellers and extra wires for iPhone and the old style micro USB I've got the USB-C which works on my iPhone or Android phones one battery and the drone Fimi X8 Mini version 2 Quite nice. It's a teeny bit flimsy. DJI and Potenza could have better made drone, but uh, I suppose that's just to keep the weight down. Oh, in with that price as well, forgot to mention, I think it was about £190. It came with a 128GB memory card. It's got the optical sensors to hold it in position. Gimbal protector. 4K camera, 3 axis gimbal, brushless motors, I'll talk about the features a bit later. I also bought a couple of extra batteries, they're either £25 or 30 I can't remember exactly because by the time I put 4 or 5 items in the basket they start giving you discounts anyway. I'll show some flight video and talk about the app. I'll just have a little look at the app. Just for reference, this is an old Google Pixel 3 phone I've had for years. If you've seen the Pedentic controller, it's exactly the same. Well, not exactly, but I think the build quality on the Pedentic is slightly better than this. Feels a bit cheap, the plastic, but it does the job. It takes uh, quite big phones. I could take my iPhone 15 Pro Max, no problem. Fimmy. You don't need to log in in this one, which is good. And it's not uh, ring fenced or whatever you call it, where you can't go over certain heights or over certain places. Click on enter the device. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute to get your satellites. And it's not getting full satellites at the moment. It's saying 19, but that's because it's in my conservatory. If I was outside, it'd probably say something like 22, 23. I think after 20, it goes uh, white. But it says ready to go. If it says yellow, VPU, don't set off because it hasn't got the satellites and it won't return to home. But if it's green and says ready to go, GPS, then it'll save your home location when you lift off. Going from left to right, top to bottom. Height in metres, you can change to feet as well. Distance away from you. Speed, horizontal speed, vertical speed in meters per second how many satellites you've got your reception when that goes yellow take the drone higher or bring it back towards you or both battery shows you your voltage and your percentage which is nice 
Right, my sensor was getting a bit too hot indoors, so I've put it outside and I'm going to take off. I'll just take it up nice and high so I'm not irritating any of the neighbours. And leave it 100 metres. So as I was saying, signal strength, battery strength. Here it gives you some information, like I was just getting then about the sensor temperature getting too high. Same gale warning, it's about 15 mile per hour winds today. That shouldn't affect it really. That icon there is to make it auto land. And that one is to make it return to home. Up to the right hand side, that's the swap between your camera and video. I leave everything on auto. I don't really bother with manual settings on these types of drones because I don't have filters for them. With my Mini 4 Pro DJI, I have filters and I'll use manual settings for that for motion blur, time lapses, things like that, but I don't bother with these. That's your shutter button, big red icon. Take pictures or start your video. Tap on your video there and you can change it from normal mode to time lapse, camera, video, one click video, panorama. So in one click video you've got your intelligent flight modes. Now I believe that these just record in 1080 before uploading straight to YouTube and social media and things like that so they're in a lower format but you've got the usual stuff, drone, orbit, spiral, drifting flight which I believe is like boomerang. I've tried a couple of them out, they're alright, they do the job, not the best. Soaring is rocket, that's where it just shoots up in the air. You can tell it how far away you want it to go as well or how high which is good. Panorama, it'll take several pictures. So you have some nice little features on there. Right going a bit further down, that's your videos and pictures. When you tap on one it has to download it to the phone before you can watch it. And then some more intelligent flight modes. You've got a basic waypoints feature, they're not brilliant on these cheaper drones, they'll just let you fly out to a certain distance and put a few points in for it to fly past. Tap fly, that means you just tap a point on the map, it'll fly to it. Smart track, that's for tapping on yourself or cars and things like that and it'll follow you around. It works sometimes, I think I usually have to do it three or four times before I get a successful track because sometimes you walk out of the picture and it stops tracking you or if you go behind something it loses you. Again, same on all these cheaper drones. Yeah, but it does the job, you just have to do it a few times. Orbit, circle around you. Spiral, circle around you, going up and wider. And then uh, cinematic mode, that means it just goes slow, so it keeps the video straight, there's no tilt and no shake, it's really stable video. Tripod, I love this feature, I'll show it in the videos later that I've taken. You, the drone will just stay where it is and you tap on yourself or a car or a motorbike, whatever you want to track and it will just record you from that position. It's a really good feature that. Course lock, tap something on the map and it will just fly to that area and you can yaw the drone around. You can get some really good video shots with that. Fixed wing, fixed wing is pretty good. It makes it fly like a RC plane so it tilts. It is a bit like FPV mode on other drones but uh, one thing you've got to be aware of it, when you let go of the sticks it carries on flying like an RC plane does so don't let that catch you out. SAR, that's to do with emergency services, don't really understand that. And down at the bottom it tells you what angle your drone's at the wind, you can see there's a bit of uh, tilt because it's trying to hold its position with the GPS in the wind. The red arrow shows you which way the wind's coming from and where the north position is. If I tap on it, you get your map. I've got this connected to Wi Fi, so it's giving me the map. You can also change that to satellite view. 
you want. You can get into your waypoints and you can tap on a position and fly to it. Again, it's not really something I bother with. If you notice at the bottom as well, you've got a small map there for tap on it. You've got the big map, but you've also got the small screen showing you the drone. So tap back on it to get your screen up. Bottom right there, you've got some information. EV, that's to do with your exposure. I usually leave that at zero, unless it's getting dark or it's too bright, and then you higher it or lower it. I'm recording in at 7.20.30. I'd normally change that to 4K, so I'll change that to 4K, 30 frames per second. You've got 2.7K, you've got HD and full HD as well, and then how much space I've got left on the memory card. So I've got, well, I've got 71% battery, we're okay for battery, so I'm just going to settings. So, your general menu and safety settings, limited flight speed, you can change that, 16 meters per second, you can actually go quite fast this, it can go up to about 40 miles per hour, but I always keep that at full. Limited flight distance, you can, oh, you can turn the limit off, you can either have a limit or not a limit. Limited flight height, I've got this set to 800 meters, not that I'd ever purposely fly that high, but if you're flying up a hill and the level of the ground is rising as you're moving then you do sometimes need to break the 120 meters height of return to home 120 meters i don't like the fact it only goes to 120 meters on this one i'd like it to go higher than that 120 meters seems to be your maximum i never got caught out because i was doing some video of a castle and i set off from ground level by the time i got to the castle the drone was at something like 200 meters but it was only probably 100 meters off the ground still. So if I went to the back of the castle and lost signal, and it tried to return to home, it could have actually lowered, or it would have actually returned to home at the level it was, and it could have crashed straight into the castle. So that is an issue. I'd like that in a future firmware to be maybe raised to 500 meters. Beginner mode, don't bother with that. It just limits the speed and distance. Sports mode, you can take it up to about 40 miles per hour. With a wind behind it, you can go even faster. I think normal speed is about 30 miles, 32, something like that. Precise landing, I haven't used that yet, but I've seen YouTube videos where it will pick out your landing mat and it should land on it. Aircraft indicator, I suppose that's to do with the this icon down here, I think. I'm not sure what that is. Magnetic interference, if that's on three, then it won't work properly. It won't let you take off. Some of the intelligent flight modes won't work. It can be a pain in the backside. You just literally have to move because there's nothing really much you can do about it. Compass calibration, fail safe. I always leave mine to return to home unless there's obstacles in the way. You can have it just hover in place or land where it is. Home point, you can change it. So you can have it come to you, wherever you're stood at the time, or you can have it come back to wherever the drone is at the time when you press that. Update, dyna so basically if you move 100 meters from where you took off from, you just tap that and it will change your home point for the drone. Enable backward flying in smart track. So if you're walking out of frame, the drone should move backwards. So it keeps you in frame. FPV shows home point, you can turn the home point on or off. Gain and export tuning, I don't mess with that. It's something to do with how fast or slow your joysticks work, but I don't really understand that. Uh, and the sensitivity, same thing. So on your camera, you can change your general settings, 4K, 2.7K, HD, 30 frames per second, 25 second. If you know about cameras and manual settings, fair enough, if you don't, just leave it in manual. I always leave my video quality in high, and then the color, but I generally keep it in general, but if you change it to vivid, it really pops the colors. black and white and f-log so I just leave mine in general vertical shooting video zoom don't bother with that because if you switch the video zoom on it's not very smooth and it also drops you to 25 frames per second no idea why but I like to leave it on 30 frames per second I usually leave the grid lines on although it seems to turn them off for some reason whenever I come out of the app and go back into it SD card how much you've got left and you can format the SD card Change your sticks, you can change what each stick movement does, I'll leave that standard. Calibrate your gimbal, gimbal pitch speed, 
So how fast or slow it pitches up or down. If you press it lightly, it goes slowly, and if you press it hard, it goes fast. So fast, slow. So I don't really see the need to change that. Advanced settings, gimbal gain, I think that's how quickly it picks up speed when you press the roller harder or lighter. Battery tells you how many cycles you've done, tells you how good your cells are, and it'll tell you how many times each one's been charged. Also you can switch it on so that it will return to home when the battery's only got enough power for return to home. Pretty sensible thing that. And land when battery only enough for land. Hmm, I don't particularly like that feature but if there's a difference between it dropping out of the air and not doing I suppose it's good but living where I live chances of you actually going and finding it without a dog running off with it or somebody stealing it pretty slim. Initiative check, no idea what that means. Flight records, don't want to look at them. Unit, I'm in England so I'll leave it set to metric. Map, Google Maps always. Firmware update, it's all updated. When you first plug it in, it uh, tells you it needs firmware update and it does it automatically. Find my drone if uh, you've lost signal or it's dropped out of the sky for whatever reason, the battery's died, it will show you the last known location on the map. I do quite like the uh, app, it's got lots of features. One thing I will point out if you point the gimbal up to the sky, say you're doing half and half, half sky, half land, when you find other trees and things like that, when you're outside and it's bright, you can barely see the land. You can barely see the ground below the horizon because it's exposing for the sky, so that's darker at the bottom. So what I always do is keep sky to a minimum. See how it's changed? So the land is a lot brighter now. If I put it back up to the sky, you can see the sky is going from bright to dim as it's exposing for the sky, but because it's only a small sensor and it's not got the quality like a big DJI sensor, it can't expose for both, so you're getting dark ground, light sky. If I bring it down again, you'll get the sky will start going brighter and the land will start going brighter. So battery's on 43%, bring it back down.
So just to summarise, I really like it, I think it's a brilliant drone for the money. It's not a brilliant drone compared to something like a DJI Mini 2 SE, I think that's better all round package. More reliable, better reception, videos slightly better as well, but for the money, what this cost, I think it cost me something like £250 with the two extra batteries. You can't grumble, it really is a good drone. It does everything and more that a DJI does. But it doesn't do it as good. I'd say it does it maybe 75% as good. But again, value for money. What it does good, lots of features. It's got the intelligent flight modes. I like the vivid feature on the video. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I really like it. It's how I tend to edit some of my videos anyway. It puts out perfectly good video. The build quality is fine. I mentioned before it's a little bit flimsy. I think uh, if you crashed it, it probably would break or crack. It's built to a price and a weight, so you're going to expect that. The batteries last for ages. Every time I've flown this, I've usually brought it back with about 20-30% in the battery. I've run out of things to video before the batteries let me down, so I can't grumble there. Excellent. Batteries are cheap enough to get spares. I'd have been probably happy with one or two batteries. I didn't need two extra batteries. Um, because they do last that long. You can guarantee it will last 20 to 25 minutes every single time, no matter what you're doing. 37 minutes as these extended batteries are supposed to last, you're probably never gonna get that. But uh, 20 to 25 minutes, no problem. It's very fast, it can go up to 40 miles per hour if you put it into sports mode. Handling, it's not if you've ever used a DJI, Mini 2 SE, Mini 3, Mini 4, something like that, when you let go of the sticks it just stops and it stays in place. This, like most cheap drones, particularly if it's windy or there's high walls or trees, things like that, it will move about. Like in the video when I'm flying up the stream and I've got branches all around me. A couple of times it did nearly hit the branches. I'd let go of the sticks hoping that it would just stay where it was but it was moving literally half a metre one way up down left right it kept for some reason trying to lower itself into the water so I kept having to lift it back up again so yeah it's a big recommendation from me I think it's a great drone great starter drone or like myself it's just a drone that I can just stick in my pocket when we're out on a walk and it's something I don't have to stress too much about if it gets lost or broken yeah it's 200 quid to replace it it is a fair chunk of money but it's not like it's a thousand pounds so yep yeah, wholeheartedly recommend it think it's brilliant definitely recommend it in the orange for some reason the orange always seems to be cheaper don't know why i like the orange i think white looks a bit boring 